This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now, there's something else that happened that was not so odd for the times. But John noticed it, and he wrote about it, and he, and he probably noticed it because there was such a message in, in what he saw. And that is that the soldiers, once the soldiers had crucified Jesus, it's John 19, starting with verse 23. Once the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, then his tunic. So they all got some of the clothing, some probably that purple robe, and then they had his tunic. And the tunic was seamless, and so they couldn't tear it up. They didn't want to tear it up. Uh, Because garments, the garments that they were gambling over, like I mentioned, probably that purple robe that they just found discarded somewhere and threw it on Jesus. And uh, then there was this tunic, which is basically an undergarment. As far as the soldiers were concerned, this was just another crucifixion. And Jesus was just another criminal. And they were totally indifferent to the suffering of Jesus. So here they were, um, playing a game, if you will, gambling over this tunic, this undergarment of Jesus, right there at the foot of the cross. They were like a lot of people today. Most people in our community uh, are are home right now. Some of them probably uh, uh, just shoveling snow. Some of them reading the newspaper. Uh, Some of them watching TV. Some of them making plans for the day. Totally oblivious. Totally oblivious to what Jesus Christ has done for them and the price that he paid for them on the cross. Totally indifferent to his love treating it like it never happened. That's their lifestyle. They don't see it as important. And you know, the thing that amazes me is that an awful lot of church people are like that also. They're going through the right religious motions, but never really understanding Christ's death. Never really understanding what it represents. Never understanding what it did. For them, personally, oh, they can, they can answer the questions. They can say, oh, yeah, Christ died for our sins, which is a, kind of a generic answer. But the personalization isn't there. The realization that that was for me. What Jesus did on the cross was for me. You see, it's a whole lot easier to say it was for us because then we just sort of, we have a whole, we're not as guilty that way. It's a little simpler to do it that way. But to when I personalize it and realize that what Jesus did on the cross was for me, it demands a response. It demands a responsibility. And there are an awful lot of people that have not been willing to take on that personal responsibility and make that personal response, even though they're church people. They're playing games at the foot of the cross. How do people play games at the foot of the cross? Well, there's really two ways, kind of the same ways that the Roman soldiers were. First of all, they take their eyes off of Jesus and they put them on other things. Even church people now. We're talking about lots of people do this. Doesn't matter if you're church or not. Take their eyes off of Christ and put it on other things. The soldiers were there for the crucifixion. Yet somehow or other, they took their eyes off of the central figure and focused on their own wants. Now, this is what I want. The world was changing, literally. I mean, what was happening on the cross was world-changing. But they were too self-absorbed to notice it, like so many people today. The book of Hebrews reminds us, Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 3, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. See, Jesus knew that there was a reason for it. He understood that, there was, that there, he, something was being accomplished on the cross. He understood that. So many people don't. They don't really understand what really happened on the cross. And he, he took on that joy set before him and endured the cross, despising the shame, and now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Now, the garments of Christ were so insignificant compared to his work on the cross. I mean, really. I mean, it was just a tunic and this old robe. 
compared to what was actually happening on, on the cross. But those soldiers weren't aware of that. But what about people who do claim to be followers of Christ and still ignore the immensity of the cross or don't really, really understand what it was all about? There are people who claim to be Christians who don't understand what really happened on the cross. You see, the cross was the bridge to eternity. And we are to live our lives in the light of eternity. What happened at the cross opened the door. It was the toll gate, if you will, to eternity. You can't enjoy the fullness of heaven. You can't enjoy the eternity with God until you go through the cross. That's just the bottom line. So the first thing that, that happens, the way that people play games at the foot of the cross, is they just they take their eyes off of Jesus and what really, really is important and what's really going on spiritually in the world today, and they have their eyesight set on other things. The second thing is by playing games. Because when playing games that ignore Jesus, playing games that just simply ignore Christ. Now, the Roman soldiers were the closest of all to Jesus. They were right there at the foot of the cross. They were able to touch him. Yet they took what they wanted and they ignored him. Much like so many people do today. I just take what I want and ignore the rest. Even Christians do that. Their relationship with Christ is about what's in it for me. And so they take what they want and they ignore the rest. Thank you. Um, it was important for them to understand that what was happening was world-changing, eternal in value, but they didn't get it. They didn't understand that. And in the world today, people are the same. They don't understand the eternal power, the eternal value of what happened on the cross. We say, well, how can a Christian do that? How, well, how does that happen for a Christian? How does a Christian get to that point? Well, really, it's for the same way that it happened for the Roman soldiers. It was a habit. It became a habit for them. You see, it was common to share the garments of the crucified ones. That was, just, that was, that was one of the perks of being a soldier, especially a soldier who, was, who had crucifixion detail. You could take the possessions of the one that was on the cross, and they probably justified it by saying, hey, it's not like I'm hurting anyone. You know, it's, this is, you know, he's not going to be using this anymore, so I can take this. Habits can take you away from the significance of the death of Jesus. Behavioral patterns that, uh, that uh, don't connect with the eternality of what God is doing today in your life and through your life. Because you're so focused on other things and they have become habits in your life that they Draw your eyes away from the power of the cross and put it on yourself. Trivializing anything that comes from God is playing games. Trivializing anything that comes from God is playing games. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes from the Father. All of that comes from God the Father. It's been given to us. And that is, has value. And it has eternal value. Because anything that the Father does has eternal value. So if God is willing to do this and give something to you that makes a difference in your life, that, and it has eternal value, and you ignore it, or you don't embrace what it really is all about, what you're doing is playing games at the foot of the cross. When you trivialize anything that comes from God, you're playing games. Clothes back then were handmade. That made them worth a lot of money. In fact, one garment of Jesus was especially expensive. It was actually that tunic. It was, like I mentioned before, kind of an undergarment. It went under the robe. Uh, it was, in, in fact, in and of itself, it was a robe or a gown. And it was woven from top to bottom without a seam. Not only was that tough to do, but it was extremely labor-intensive, and therefore it was expensive. So much so that the soldiers decided 
hey, we don't want to tear this up. Let's just, just let's gamble. And see, you know, one of us will get it. And so they decided to, to gamble for it. Now, you know what kind of person wore an expensive piece of clothing like that? Well, not a rich man, because Jesus wasn't rich. The person who wore an expensive piece of clothing like that was a priest. It was a priestly garment. A priest, a bridge between God and man, which is exactly what Jesus was. He was that bridge between God and mankind. He was the perfect priest, a bridge between us and God. Hebrews 4 starting with verse 14, says it this way, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. He was God. That made him sinless. He was man. And he was sensitive. And he was crucified. And that made him our Savior. How will that influence what you do for the rest of today and all of next week? You see, it's important for us to understand that our foundation as believers, as Christians, begins at the cross. What Jesus did at the cross changed the world, changed us. And if we trivialize anything that comes from God, then we're playing games at the foot of the cross. If we take anything that Christ did and we just go, ah, that was cool, that's sweet, that was nice, that's kind, and don't understand how it changes our life, and let it change our lives. We're playing games at the foot of the cross. And it begins all the way back at the manger scene. You know, it's so easy for us to embrace the Christmas story and look at, oh, isn't that sweet, a baby Jesus born in a manger, and we sterilize it, and we make this beautiful little picture out of it, and we put it on Christmas cards, and there are beautiful little paintings of it, you know, with glitter on it, and beautiful stars shining, and so forth and so on. And these, these apparently... Uh, shepherds who apparently had just taken a bath because they're all clean, and uh, they come to see Jesus, and you know, and then the kings, come, you know, and we make up these beautiful little stories out of it, and yet we, what we're doing is we're not really catching the full impact of what was what was happening, what was going on. We're playing games at the foot of the cross. When Jesus went and healed people, when he when he put his hands on somebody and healed them, which had in, eternal implications, and we went, oh, isn't that great? Jesus healed somebody. That's sweet. That's kind. Jesus was really a good good guy. And we trivialize it, and we 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 miss what was really happening. Why did Jesus heal him? What was the purpose? What was the plan? What were the implications? What were the consequences? Because you see, when Jesus healed this person, that had a direct influence on that person's family and that person's circle of influence and that person's generations to follow. It had incredible implications. And the same thing is true for us. When God does something in our lives, when he answers prayer, when he meets a need in our lives, it has eternal implications that affect not only us, but our family and our circle of influence, and our generations to follow. You see, God is up to something in your life, but he is up to something in your life so he can have a direct influence in other people's lives. And if we trivialize that, then we're playing games at the foot of the cross. When you face your work this week, When you face family this week, when you face friends, neighbors, when you face people in your life this week who God puts in your life, your circle of influence, God puts those people in your life to have a connect with them, and you trivialize it, you just, oh, this is just, okay, this is is what's going on, cool. 
You're playing games at the foot of the cross. That job you have, you didn't get that job. God provided that job. Why did he provide that job to you at that place, at this point, at this time in history? It has an eternal implications. Because it will affect somebody there that will affect somebody else that will affect somebody else. And if you don't understand the implication of that, then you're playing games at the foot of the cross. If you neglect to connect with somebody in those, one of those divine appointments that God sends your way, and you just brush it off, and you don't really embrace the fact that God is using you, and that he wants to use you, and the more that he, you give him permission to use you, the more he can use you. If you don't embrace that, then you're playing games at the foot of the cross. You're no better than the Roman soldiers. You have a calling. When you understand what Christ did on the cross, it demands a response. And if it demands a response, it demands a responsibility. What is your responsibility? If you take what you've learned today and don't act on it, you're playing games at the foot of the cross. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a